G'day, this is Scotty Tucker. Today I want to talk about Kumbungi. Kumbungi can be a, a native species, there's also introduced species here in Australia. It's also known as uh, cigar rush, bull rush. Uh, in the US it's known as cattail. And even though it can be a native species and can uh, be beneficial, especially in the natural sort of environment, which you can somewhat see behind me, is a bit of a, uh, a lowland, low spot natural sort of population of, uh, of Kumbungi where it's acting as a somewhat of a wetland filter. I'm not sure if you can hear but there's frogs off in the background as well. But the problem with Kumbungi is that it's probably one of the, if not the most invasive species in private dams, residential dams. And the reason for that is that it just so quickly grows out of control and it's difficult to contain and it's just so fast growing and it's very prolific in terms of its spreading. The reason for that is that the, the seed pod, which is the, the, the part of the plant that looks like the, the actual cigar rush or the, the cattail, uh, when that drops its seed, there is thousands, thousands, thousands of these little seed spores that uh, drift off out into the, uh, into the surrounding area. And that just leads to excessive growth wherever these seeds take hold. And they're kind of like a, a fairy floss consistency and they, they very easily spread from, from place to place just through the wind. You can actually see one of the uh, one of these here, but here behind me. Me, that's sort of what I'm talking about. So very, very easy for this stuff to just come off and spread and uh, and just go through the environment and just spread this all over the place. And that's essentially what's happened here at uh, one of our clients up in New South Wales, who right next to a uh, natural sort of population of um, Kumbungi has got this lovely little dam. But unfortunately, over time, the Kumbungi has just completely overpopulated it and completely choked out the entire system. So there's very little uh, sort of open water space for us to work with and for the clients to enjoy. So what we're having to do now is to just physically remove all this organic material, which is very difficult now that the, the built environment around it means that it's, it's tough to get in machinery and equipment. So uh, in a lot of cases like this, you have to just go old school and just get it out. What we can do now is try and as best we can, remove the organic material, try and get some open spaces of water and then aerate and biologically try and degrade this sort of rotting material. Part of the reason why this plant's so tough and difficult to, to remove and eradicate is that the root system is quite extensive and you can see there's a little runner or a side shoot sort of going off to the side there. These form a massive uh, root throughout the system and can completely choke it out. And while that one was relatively, relatively easily to remove, when you start getting these things that are as big as the ones behind me, as big as the ones over here, um, even in soft ground, it's almost impossible to pull out by hand. So it's very, very difficult to remove. So Kumbungi, it might look okay and, and you know some people like the look of it and where it's planted in, in, in sort of areas that it's under control, it's a good species to have. But my advice is if you didn't plant it and you don't have it under control, get it out as soon as possible because it just becomes so invasive so quickly, it's just not worth the headache of, uh, uh, of trying to manage it. I, I just say just get it out as soon as you can. I'm Scotty Tucker, thanks for watching.